Hello, I'm Neil MacDonald. I've been running megalithic tours for nearly two decades now because throughout Britain and Europe, mysterious stone structures such as this can be found dating back thousands of years. But why did our ancestors build these magnificent monuments and what were they used for? Well, in this series of short videos, I'm going to attempt to answer these questions one ancient site at a time. So please do click on subscribe and on the bell to be notified of these future videos. For this episode of Megalithic Shorts, we're 1,350 feet above sea level, right on the edge of the village of Shap. We're in a narrow corridor of land here between the western Cumbrian Fells, the Lake District just over there, and the eastern Pennine Mountains just over here. For thousands of years, this thoroughfare would have been used from people moving from Northern England up to what is now Scotland. This is evidenced by the fact we've got the mainline railway from London to Glasgow right next to us and here is the, the main A6 road and about 100 yards over there is the M6 so everything flows through here. But 5,000 years ago an ancient serpent temple stood right here. Unfortunately time has ravished this uh, amazing place but there's still enough to remind us if we use our mind's eye and work our thoughts, we can build a picture of this ancient sacred temple. This was the head of the mighty serpent. It's Kemphouse Stone Circle. It was used to be a massive stone circle of 80 feet in diameter, built of these huge boulders of the, the local red uh, granite with the pink felspar crystals encased into it. Shap actually means heap of stones and it refers to these stones that were that are mined here. It's the same stone that's mined in Aswan that it was used to build uh, the king's uh, chamber in the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau. Unfortunately, the mainline railway now cuts straight through the middle of it. Very much like that. From here, a huge stone avenue headed off to the north. Very much like the West Kennard uh, Avenue at Avebury. It started off at this end with a, a width of 70 feet, just slightly less than the stone circle here at 80 feet and it headed off right through the village of Shap for a mile and a half until it reached Scullyle Hill to the north. Now according to the Dr. J. Simpson, who was the vicar of Shap from 1857, before it got to Scullyle Hill, it passed through another huge stone circle called Carl's Loft. This had a diameter of 200 feet and a massive megalith in the middle which was broken up to make seven yacht stoops or gate posts which you can still find around the town now. The earliest recording of Shap came from William Stookley in 1725. On the south side of the town of Shap, six miles south of Penrith, we saw the beginnings of a great Celtic Avenue on a green common. This is just behind the horrid and rocky fells where a good country begins. This avenue is 70 foot broad, composed of very large stones set at equal intervals. It seems to be closed at this end and hence it proceeds northwards to the town, which intercepts the, the continuation of it and was the occasion of its ruin. 
For many of the stones that are put under the foundations of houses and walls, being pushed by machines they call a betty, or blown up with gunpowder. Houses and fields lie across the track of this avenue, and some of the houses lie in its enclosure. It ascends the hill, crosses the common road of Penrith, and so goes into the cornfields on the other side of the way westward, where some of the stones are left standing, one particularly remarkable called the Goggleby Stone. Here was a great temple of the old Britons, such as that at Avebury, which it resembles very much. And this wonderful 12 stone megalith here is the very Goggleby Stone that Stukeley was referring to. Unfortunately, most of his 500 companions have now well and truly disappeared. And Gogglebee himself had a bit of a niss up in 1969 when he fell over. But I always say falling over once in 5,000 years is no great embarrassment. Well, luckily the archaeological department of Lancaster University were able to put him back in his socket hole again. And here he stands still to this day. There's one more stone in the next field that still remains from the avenue. It's called the Asper Stone. So this is the Asper Stone. So named after the fact that it's in uh, for Farmer Asper's field. Two important features here are this well-defined cup and ring light here and another one over here. Now from here, the avenue went off north to Scullill Hill where it ended. Now, Scullill Hill must have got the name from the human bones that were found in the chambered tomb there. And this is a repeating feature across Britain where you would have something like a sacred place like a chambered tomb, then a stone avenue off to a stone circle where maybe they had a meeting later or a party even. From Scullill Hill, uh, Scull Hill, Hill, there was an ancient trackway that carried on to the north to Moor Divock. But more about that in the next episode of Megalithic Shorts. So if you enjoyed the film, please do make a comment, uh, click on like and unsubscribe, and also on the little bell above to be informed of future videos. If you'd like to make a contribution to the making of these films, my PayPal and Patreon accounts are below. Tour information is at www.megalithictours.com. I hope to see you on a tour very soon, but in the meantime, have a truly megalithic time. <laughs>